next one we have is metformin associated lactic acidosis in short you can say mala right it's a it's a rare situation it's a rare condition you don't see it quite often happening uh, with the patient but uh, uh, if the patient is on metformin yeah it can happen you have to think about this as well uh, your fy2 in gp surgery it might be gp setting or it might be a &E setting as well. The reason is, see, if this is tired, but this patient can have other symptoms like a small breathing as well. If that's the case, patient might not be coming to the GP surgery because for GP surgery, you have to book an appointment. In a &E, I can go walk in. I cannot go walk into the GP surgery. So these cases are mostly we'll see in a &E. Patient is Mr. James, 45 years, has called in, with the complaint of tiredness. Okay, so this can come as a teleconsultation as well, can come as in-person consultation as well, right? So maybe a patient has booked an appointment in the GP or patient is uh, calling a &E straight on as well. In teleconsultation, what happened is, the question comes is who is calling? Is it the patient calling the doctor or doc doctor is calling the patient? Mainly what happened is, mainly what happened is, it is the doctor who calls the patient because when patient has a problem they call the surgery and book the appointment and at the proper time whenever the time is then doctor make the call to the patient that's what happens routinely right but if it is an emergency case it might be a patient calling a &E straight away as well okay so the scenario might be in the a &E, might be in the gp as well right so the last time couple of time when the station came it came as a tele consultation can come as in person consultation as well doesn't make any difference at all okay sometime maybe what might have happened i'm just telling you different different ways the station might come maybe this patient has made a call not to the triple nine maybe made a call to triple one what is triple one number four triple one is for non-emergency cases emergency is triple nine but if you have a problem it's not an emergency you might be calling triple one as well so somebody's going to listen to you and then they'll put you in contact with the relevant people and then the, the specialist is going to call you in some time and then they will be going with a bit more detailed history Okay, okay. so has called you with the complaint of tiredness and uh, is a diagnosed case of type 2 DM and is on mud metformin. Talk to him and the manage. How can I help? So make sure if it is teleconsultation, you are just doing uh, all the things uh, needed for teleconsultations properly, meaning uh, you have to confirm uh, uh, number one, uh, you have to confirm three identities. That's going to be the name age, age or date of birth. And the third thing is the address of the patient, right? So the address and all these things will be given to you in the cubicle. So do not miss these points. So confirm three ID proofs. And then uh, obviously ask if it is a good time to talk. Yeah. And the third thing would be, are you able to hear me? Clearly, that is the main thing, right? So these are the things that you can do. Okay, so any teleconsultation, you are supposed to do these things and the address and all this extra information will be given to you in the cubicle as well. And when you go in, you may, may not have the exam in the cubicle as well. So that's fine, you can just move on, yeah? How can I help you? I'm feeling tired since I woke up this morning. Okay, tell me more, tell me more. The thing is, uh, since I woke up, I'm having problems. So this is something very concerning, right? So symptoms started just this morning. Is it getting worse since the morning? That is something that you can ask, right? Anything else? This patient is saying, I'm breathing faster than usual. You know, the lactic acidosis, this mala, metabolic acidosis, metformin-associated lactic acidosis, the patient can have cosmol breathing as well, which is faster breathing. When you have got these two things in the history, that patient is feeling tired since morning and uh, the patient is having this uh, faster breathing as well. So you have to be very careful now. So we can ask some other questions associated with the mala, lactic acidosis. For example, if the patient is feeling dizzy, any confusion, any nausea vomiting, any tummy pain, any muscle cramp, any chest pain, any palpitation. The patient is diagnosed case of uh, diabetes. I'll ask about diabetes as well. So you're taking this metformin. Are you taking it regularly? Are you taking it as prescribed? By any chance, any missed dose? If your diabetes is well controlled uh, and uh, are you taking the medication? I mean, are you... Uh, 
Uh, are you checking your blood sugar regularly? When was the last time you checked? If you have got symptoms of diabetes, if you have got any complication of diabetes, if you have got any episodes of low blood sugar, ask all those questions. I think you'll have enough questions to ask in that history. So elaborate your tiredness, elaborate your breathing uh, uh, faster than usual, and then ask some more questions about mala, ask some questions about diabetes as well. That's the main thing, right? And I'm going to do general physical vitals and neurological examination. Blood test, ABG, UNE, LFT, KFT, these, these things that we can do, right? Now, if the patient is calling you, can you do these blood tests over the phone? Not possible. And we understand if it is lactic acidosis, mat metformin associated, it is an emergency as well. Otherwise, it can be life-threatening as well. So what you need to do, you are over the phone. So are you going to tell the patient to call the ambulance? Are you going to tell the patient to come to the emergency? Not really. What I would say I am going to call them. That is something that you need to do. You have to be very careful. See, this patient might collapse the next second. So if you tell the patient you just cut the call and call the ambulance, he might not be in a situation to do that, right? So it's you who's going to call the ambulance, right? Second thing, if you see, I've taken the address of the patient already because why address is so important. So I think you'll be able to relate things here. Why address is important. So I'm talking to this patient and all of a sudden this patient can't communicate with me. So what I need in that case, I need to have the address. I already have the address, so at least I can send the ambulance to that address. That is the main reason. Okay. So you can explain that lactic acidosis is a rare condition, but it is a serious condition that happens when too much of lactic acid builds up in your body. It's a natural substance produced by the muscles and the RBC, but your liver and kidneys usually help to remove it. Metformin is a medication that we give for diabetes. In rare cases, it can lead to a condition called mala. It happens when the body cannot clear lactic acid properly and it can be dangerous as well. All right. So I'm going to call the ambulance. The treatment is... Uh, in the hospital, what we're going to do? We're going to admit you in the hospital. Number one is we'll be giving IV fluids. The main treatment is IV fluids, IV fluids, IV fluids. Yeah. Second is obviously you're going to stop my metformin. You're going to stop my metformin. Now a question comes, yeah. a lot of candidates ask me, are we going to give activated charcoal or not? See, activated charcoal can be given in any scenario when uh, uh, they have taken the drugs just now. But they say the metformin absorption is actually very fast if they're taken, right? So activated charcoal has got very little or no role to play in the management of mala. So I wouldn't recommend you to mention it. So mainly what you need to mention is IV fluids, stop your metformin, right? And definitely we'll be keeping an eye on your liver kidney function test as well. That's the main thing. And uh, the main treatment that you might be doing is giving sodium bicarbonate in extreme cases. Obviously, I'm going to do ABG and that will give me a bit better idea as well. And in severe cases, we might be going for dialysis as well. Make sure your patient, your patient is not dehydrated. That's the main thing. Yeah. So that's, that's really, really important here. Right, so your differentials will be like uh, if the patient is having DKA, for example. So DKA will have uh, other symptoms as well. And obviously, uh, here I will be able to do the urine test as well to have some ketones. So that is the main thing. And DKA, you, you usually you'll see when patient is uh, starving, not eating or something. So then there are chances that might go in, into DKA. But this patient is eating. This patient is eating as well, right? And do ABG, do urine test. And I think that's how we can conclude if the patient has got lactic acidosis. Treatment is uh, admitting the patient. That's the main thing. And... Uh, IV fluids, stopping morphine, uh, sorry, this metformin and sodium bicarbonate, depending on obviously the blood levels you need to uh, check here and accordingly we'll see. And we might be going for dialysis as well. So that is the main thing that you need to do, right? Uh, monitor for any new symptoms and let the family member know so they can help you, support you and follow up with the GPO diabetes for your further uh, assessments as well, right? Take precautions in the future by staying hydrated, avoiding excess alcohol, and informing your doctors if you become unwell. All those things that we can mention.
right? So that's what you have to do in this scenario. If you get a, a scenario on lactic acidosis. All right. Thank you.